A few weeks ago, Meta released a new campaign type called an Advantage Plus shopping campaign. This is honestly one of the most interesting changes that Meta made over the last few months in their advertising platform. All of these rumors about broad being the best way to go and about you know going more at the ad level have kind of been confirmed by Meta making that move. Although it now removes a level of advertising, basically the ad set level is now non-existent. So how does that change the game and how do you properly set up from A to Z an Advantage Plus shopping campaign and ensure that it becomes profitable. Well, that's what I wanna cover in today's video. So I wanna run you through a step-by-step -step tutorial on setting up an Advantage Plus campaign on Facebook ads. My name is Justin and I'm the founder at Wizzle Media, an e-commerce marketing agency specializing in elevating thriving brands by simplifying e-commerce growth. With that being said, let's get you into it. So if you're on your ad account, first thing you're gonna do is click create here at the top. So when you click create, you're gonna have buying type, you're obviously gonna choose auction, and then from there, you're gonna choose sales. So this Advantage Plus shopping campaign is only available for a sales campaign. So if I pick the sales campaign right here and I go next, you're gonna see here at the top, Advantage Plus shopping campaign. So what it says, it's maximizes performance and find new customers. Preset settings include automatic placements, lowest cost bid strategy, and more. And Facebook gives it, you know, streamlined, so create a campaign in fewer steps, tailored, so create a campaign using a setup tailored to help businesses like yours create sales campaign and best practices. So with that said, um, some of the things that can be just already extracted from what it says right here is you will most likely find lower CPMs with such a campaign. Why? Because you're playing in the algorithm's favor. Facebook kind of wants you to use this style of campaign. And second reason as to why you might see lower CPMs with an Advantage Plus shopping campaign is because your targeting is mostly broad. So if I go to continue right here and I go to next steps. So let's first take a look at the campaign level. You're gonna have here the top maximize performance and find new customers. So if I click on see all preset settings, you can see that this campaign objective is sales um, by default and none of those settings can be changed by the way. So campaign objective, sales, bid strategy, highest volume, dynamic creative is off, right? Because there's no ad set level and the dynamic creative is usually a setting turned on or off at the ad set level. Placements are advantage plus placements. Now be wary about one thing, which I also made a video about recently. When using advantage plus placements, um, you might see some weird cropping or branding with your ads. So this is where Facebook might add a small colored banner on your ad. Um, it'll usually pick out one color within your ad, add a banner over there and then add your headline within your creative or kind of do again some weird cropping here and there. Um, so if you really care a lot about branding and you don't necessarily want to mess with that, then obviously don't use Advantage Plus shopping campaign. Whereas if you care about results, about profits and about growth, then definitely consider using an Advantage Plus shopping campaign. Now, which is very interesting right here, age is by default to everyone. So basically, no matter the age, you're gonna target everyone on Facebook and then you optimize obviously for conversions. Now, I've also recently made a video about why you should pick website and shop if you're an e-commerce brand. So not everyone is going to have that option who's gonna be watching this video. So don't worry if you're watching this and you don't see website and shop right here, you might just see websites. Um, so with that being said, what website and shop is, is that Facebook will dynamically show ads where part of your ads will lead to your website and part of your ads will lead directly to your meta shop where people can actually now buy and check out directly on Facebook or Instagram without leaving the platform. So they don't even go to your website because right now, or actually before I should say, if people used to see a product within your ads that was linked to your shop on Meta, so what that means, you know, Facebook or Instagram, they would, uh, if they're interested in the product, they would click on it and get redirected to your site to complete purchase. Whereas now it happens straight on Meta platforms. So if you do end up picking a website and shop, which I highly recommend if you are an e-commerce business and have the capacity to do so, you would have to pick your commerce account right here. If you don't, then in that case, you can just go for website right here. And then if you've noticed when I switch to website, I get a pop-up on Facebook saying, in a recent test, businesses on average experience 16% better ad performance in campaigns that send people to both website and shop compared to website only, which is normal because again, the checkout process is usually quicker on Meta. So again, if you have the availability to do so, I'll pick website and shop. So in that case, just for the sake of it, I'll pick, um, I'll go ahead and pick website and shop. If you don't have this option, just go for website. Now for audience location, you can see that you have quite limited targeting capabilities. In fact, the only thing you can define is the country. You can only define where you actually are running those ads. You can't define to who 
and nor any interest-based audiences. So it's completely broad. You can define gender, you can define age. So you only pick to the actual geographical location where your ads are going to be running. Now, what does that tell you about where Meta is heading with their advertising platform. First and foremost, it confirms a lot of the beliefs that people had over the last few months. Whereas one of these beliefs was that broad was probably gonna be performing better. Which in that case, why would Facebook force you to do broad if broad wasn't a better option? So that's one thing. Second option is the fact that a lot of people were saying, let the creative do the targeting. So if your ad shows a woman, then Facebook will be smart enough to actually show that ad to woman. If your ad shows a man, Facebook will be smart enough to show it to a man. If it talks about cooking, Facebook will be smart enough to actually show it to people who are interested in cooking. You get the gist of it. So this again kind of confirms that where as you're so limited by your targeting, the only thing left, which we're gonna cover in a second, is the ad level. So in this case, you pick whatever region or country you want to run your ads into. So for the sake of it, I'll just pick United States and Canada. So there we go. I've got both right here for now. On the reporting, it tells you receive additional insights about your campaign. So audience type breakdown, what is that exactly? So audience type breakdown include existing customers and account settings to see audience type breakdowns between your new and existing customers. So we've included a list and that again is something that you can edit in your account settings. So as an example, I'm looking into it right here. If I click on the account settings, you now see a new settings on their ad account setup, which is for Advantage Plus campaigns, what it tells you right here is your advertising settings automatically apply across all Advantage Plus shopping campaigns in this ad account. Define your existing customers using custom audiences to receive additional insights about your Advantage Plus shopping campaign audiences. So what that kind of tells you is basically pick an audience that has the most information possible about your current audience so that when you're gonna see performance breakdown from an Advantage Plus campaign, you can actually see whether or not those are existing customers and if so, get more in-depth insight. We could have put the entire Shopify customers list. We just put by default because we hadn't synced already the purchase 180 days. But again, the more data you give it, the better it is. And here, if you're using anything like Triple Well or Hyros, you can add your UTM parameters uh, right there so that, again, it'll help with tracking on these softwares. So going back to the ad account, now you're gonna see some different styles of settings at the campaign level. So you have your daily budget. And as you can see, it's obviously a CBO. There's no way to do ABO, there's no ad sets. So by default, it's a campaign based optimization budget. So in that case, you put whatever budget you want to put right there. And then there's this new setting, which is going to be very important for you to listen as to what it does and what you want to set up right here. Existing customer budget cap, set a maximum budget percentage to spend on your existing customers we will likely spend less than the percentage you've set, but will aim to spend no more. That is currently bullshit. We've done a lot of tests and in every single test that we ran, Facebook has always spent a lot more than the existing budget cap that we've put right there. So we've actually tried 20 and 30%, even 35 and 40% just to see what it would do. And in almost every case, it actually spent about 1.5 to even 2x the percentage that was right here. So right now we recommend and internally try to not set it to anything higher than 10 to 15%, which would mean that you get about 70 to 80% new customers coming from these campaigns, whereas the rest would become retargeting. And that was tested just so you know, through triple well. So in this case, we'll just set it for the sake of it to 15%, which is kind of the default setting that I advise most of you set it to, put it to 15% and then closely watch your returning customer rate go up or down or new customer ROAS, depending on whichever one you track based on the tools that you have. So if you're only using Shopify as an example, then take a look at your returning customer rate for the next few days, see if it increases or lowers, depending again on the changes that you've done right here. Also take a look at the breakdown that you're gonna have from the campaign here on the ads manager, which I'll get into in a second and adapt based on that. But for the sake of it, I always recommend just start with 15% and then if needed, lower it from there. Now, last but not least, whatever ad optimization period you're gonna pick. So in this case, we're gonna leave it at default at 70 click one day view. Now at the ad level, you might already be very familiar with that. It's quite similar to the regular ad level. So you have, there, honestly, there's pretty much no differences except one. So you create your ad, you choose whether or not it's a manual upload or you automatically pick creatives based on your catalog. Single image or video, carousel or collection if you want multi-advertiser ads. So again, very similar. Now there's this offer button that is, uh, or this offer button that is here, right here. So add an existing offer to your ad, offers that customers say want selected products with the promo code. So you choose whatever offer that are already available right now with your ads. You create a new offer if you have not already. 
I won't really cover this that much in the video because we don't honestly use it right now. I would leave this off personally. So you create your ad as per usual, call to action again, very similar to usual. So you pick whatever you want to have right here. So in that case, you know, if you're, you're doing it for an e-commerce site, most of the time it's gonna be shop now or learn more. So you put your website URL, you make sure your shop is properly set up. Um, there's different languages, you pick different languages. You make sure that you select the proper domain name. You make sure that offline events are selected based, you know, with the right pixel. And last but not least, your URL parameters, you make sure that you put the right UTMs for your ad. So if you're using triple wall, then you can actually pick the triple wall UTMs. If not, I would just say type on YouTube, um, UTM parameters, Justin Lalonde. So basically my name and you'll find I've got actually two videos talking about the subject. So what UTM parameters you should actually be using with your ads. Now, before I get into the reporting part of an Advantage Plus campaign, I wanna talk a little bit more about why would you wanna use that? So there is a structure that I have yet to make a video about that we've started using at the agency, which is still a broad campaign structure, but we're using it with dynamic creative tests. Now, what dynamic creative tests allow us to do is to group certain common tests under a same ad set. So what ends up happening is that let's say we're testing a specific concept, like we're running ads um, as we are right now, as an example, for a uh, app that is meant to, to, to make new friends. So a, a concept that we could have is a concept about being ghosted. So a concept about being ghosted would become the DCT. And then from there, you would have ads under that dynamic creative test that are all about the same concept. It's not something you can do with that campaign type. Here again, all your ads are kind of standalone. And as it's CBO, it won't optimize based on your dynamic creative test or your ad sets. It'll kind of optimize based on the actually best performing ad. So with that being said, here is a very good way to test mass number of ads. If you want to test a lot of ads at the same time, this is honestly a great campaign to do that. There are a few caveats though. The first one being ads made inside of an Advantage Plus shopping campaign cannot be duplicated anywhere else than the campaign that they have been created into. So as an example, if I click on this right here, the only option I have is quickly duplicate. So what that tells you is, you know, if, if you're familiar with it, if I just pick quickly duplicate, you're going to see it right here. It duplicates it within the same campaign. There's no way for me to duplicate that to another campaign as an example. Although one thing to also note right here is that you can actually use existing posts. So you could go right here, instead of creating an ad, you can use an existing post ID and then have that within your Advantage Plus shopping campaign. And now as an example, I wanna show you the reporting side of this. So if you're going right here and you're going to breakdown, you're gonna see a breakdown here basically that says audience type. So if I go right here, it tells you view your data by new and existing customers, which that is done through Advantage Plus shopping campaigns. As you can see for that campaign, all of our conversions are coming from the new customers segment. So there's basically no conversions coming from returning customers. So that's good to note. Also something to note right here, you're gonna see website purchase conversion value and meta purchase conversion value, which is basically how much are we getting? As I showed you earlier, we're using a website and shop campaign. So how much are we getting in sales on the site versus how much are we getting through the meta shop? Again, you can see right here that most of the conversions in that case are coming from the website. But as per a video I made earlier in the year, we noticed that again, having website and shop simply lowers your CPMs because it's just for the same reason that if you're doing a lead generation campaign and you're trying to acquire leads on your website or you're trying to acquire leads on Facebook with their instant forms, well, you would actually have a lower CPM by doing so on Facebook because Facebook likes that because you're keeping the engagements and the consumer on Facebook. So if the user stays on Facebook, then it's most likely to actually keep on consuming contents and interacting with more posts, more ads in the platform. Whereas if you take them to a website, then you kind of stop their interaction with the platform here. Therefore, again, Meta doesn't like that as much. So just having website and shop turned on, even though you don't get that many sales from it, might positively affect your CPMs. Last but not least, I recommend you have the same amount of copy and headline that I would for a regular ad, which is that you have about two to three pieces of copy per ad and that you have two headlines per ad again so that there is some form of testing being done on that side. With that being said, that pretty much concludes today's video. If you have any questions around successfully running an Advantage Plus shopping campaign, making sure that you've set it up properly or want to double check everything, then I'd incentivize you to look in the description down below and join our free Facebook group. You can ask, and again, any questions in there and I'll be more than happy to help you out on 
there. With that being said, I've also got two more links in the description below. One, if you want our agency to be running your own ads and producing all of your creative assets, then again, there's a link for that. And if you're not yet at a point where you can comfortably afford an agency, but you want over the shoulder help, so you want somebody to help you on a done with you consulting basis, then again, we have that option, which is going to be linked down below. So on that note, make sure you check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.